Okay, so you know what? If I've done a quiz about the US, it's only natural that I do a quiz about my home country, Canada. So let's go to what do you know about Canada? How long is this quiz actually? Does it tell you? Oh shoot, 19 questions, oh boy. So, what is the highest honor a Canadian can receive? Honestly, if I do poorly on this test, that's going to make me look so bad and I'm going to get to another country and I have to find somewhere else to live and I don't know where. But let's just hope that I get it right. Um, so, okay, the, honest, the highest honor a Canadian can receive has to either be the Victoria Cross, the Order of Canada, the Order of Merit, or is it the Royal Victorian Order? Yeah, that sounds fancy. That sounds like something, you know, that would be an honor to receive. It was the Victoria Cross. Well, okay, it was Victoria something, but Victoria what? Victoria Secret? Actually, no, that's not an honor. That would be quite an insult to look at one of these men and throw a lingerie at them. Seriously, they would be so embarrassed and upset if you just threw panties and bras and garter straps at them. Like, wow, that'd be so offensive. Okay, what the hell, Victoria Secret? <laughs> It's supposed to be Victoria's Cross, and then we're way between right now, we're on the topic of Victoria's Secrets. Anyway, next question. In what year was the Canadian Constitution amended to include the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms? Okay, I remember studying this in class one time, but that's been a long time ago, so let's just say it was, uh, 1967, right? Oh my gosh, 1982, why didn't I pick that? In the back of my mind, I was kind of thinking, you know, it has to be 1982, but no. I went with 1967 just because I just randomly felt like it with no special explanation or reasoning, but all right. Next question. What Canadian province did not sign the amended constitution? Okay, I'm going to make a prediction. It's probably Newfoundland and Labrador. Let's see if I'm right. Oh, that's one of the options. So it has to be either Newfoundland and Labrador, Manitoba, Quebec, or Saskatchewan. Now, the reason why I strongly believe that it has to be Newfoundland and Labrador is because... This province, I believe, was the last province that actually officially joined the country, you know, Confederation. So it would make sense that they were the province that did not want to sign the amended constitution. And if it's not them, then I'm going to, uh, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to rage. That's what I'm going to do. Serious? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's another province that kind of likes to just act like they don't want to be here. Quebec. Although that's actually a very debatable thing. So some people are saying that they don't want to be here. Some people are saying that they do and that we need to all stand for one. But I'm not going to comment much on this because this is a quiz and we're supposed to be having fun. Not bickering about, oh, get out of this country. Oh, no, stay with us. Because no. Actually, I'll comment on a little bit. I think Quebec should stay and we should treat them as Canadians because they are a province of Canada. So what if they speak French? Learn it. Don't learn it. But just don't judge them and say, get out of here just because they speak French. Like, no. Or just because people speak English and you want to separate. Like, that's not cool. Just sit together in harmony. Whether you speak English or whether you speak French, we're Canadians. So just sing and be happy. Play the clarinet, the flute, the viola, the violin, the cello, the contrabassoon. And just be happy, regardless of whether you speak English or French. Now, okay, this is a quiz, so let's move it. In Canada... Are men and women considered equal under the law? Well, they better, because if they're not, then something's wrong here, because we can't call ourselves true, happy, process nation if we still more than women or women more than men. Depends on the circumstance. <laughs> okay, so let's just say yes. I hope it's true. Okay, good. Okay, unlike the American quiz, this doesn't offer any trivia, so it's highly... You know your stuff or you don't. Depends on the circumstance. What? <laughs> okay. So, in the Inokitot language, what does the word Inuit mean? I'm going to predict it means snow. Northern people, native people, the people, Indians. Well, it certainly doesn't mean Indians. I don't think it means the people. And I don't think it means native people. So... Wouldn't it mean northern people? Wow, that's a beautiful picture. And you knock shock and the moon in the Arctic. I've never been to the Arctic before, but maybe one of these days I might just have to go there. Anyway, let's go with the northern people. 
Are you kidding me? So it means just the people? So in Inuit, Inuit means just the people. So for all these years, wow. I mean, I know who the Inu are. They're, they are those Aboriginal people that live up north that kind of look like East Asians. So I'm familiar with them, but I didn't know that it meant the people. Wow. Whose portrait is on the $10 bill? You know, the other day I was looking at a $10 bill, but I forget now. Let's just go with um, Sir Wilfrid Laurier. Or is it Queen Elizabeth? Or is it Sir John... What is it? A stand for his name again? Sir John Arnold MacDonald? Sir John... Actually, okay, forget it. It was Pierre... No, it's not Pierre Trudeau. It was Sir Wilfrid Laurier. Oh my gosh. It was Sir John... Amethyst McDonald. It's okay, he's not alive, so you can't judge me or chop off my head for um, mixing up his name. In what year did British Columbia join Canada? I'm going to predict that they joined in 1895. I'm probably dead wrong, but two dams. Okay, so it's 18 something. Let's go with 1875. Oh, it was 1871. That's too bad for me. Oh, well, I did not know that. I'll visit that province someday, I hope. In 1916, which Canadian province was the first to grant voting rights to women? I'm going to predict that it was... Ontario, right? The largest province in terms of people? Oh, it's one of the options. So it has to either be Ontario, Quebec. British Columbia or Manitoba. Um, let's go for Ontario because it's a cool province. No, it was Manitoba. Darn it. Winnipeg is a very cold city, I can tell you that. I was there when I was younger and it's brutal! Now, question 19. Um, in what year were women finally given the right to vote in federal elections? Um, was it... Uh, and what year were women finally given the right to vote in federal elections? It was just, um, 1930, I guess? Oh, that's one of the options. Okay, I'm going to pick 1930 then. 1917. Wow. Who would have thought? So women were given the right to finally vote in federal elections in 1917. Well, that was just before the Great Depression, or the Dirty Thirties, so, I guess. Question 10. In what year was the unconditional right to vote extended to Aboriginal Canadians? To all Aboriginal Canadians, not just Micmacs, or Mohawks, or Algonquins, or Crees, or Inuits, but to all the Aboriginals of Canada. Now, it was 1960. Sweet, I got it right. Actually, I didn't make a prediction from before, but that's okay. What do you know about Canada? A lot. Or at least, I claim to know a lot. But this quiz is putting me to the test. There have been two sovereignty referendums in Quebec. Okay, remember when I was talking about Quebec independence not too long ago? So here we go with this question. I already commented on it, so you know how I feel about it. Stay together! In which year was the first one held? I'm going to predict um, 1888, just because. Okay, let's go for 1980. Sweet, I was right. Although my original prediction wasn't, but hey, it's multiple choice, so I get that flexibility. Although, if I just had to answer it as is, I would have been dead wrong. But thanks to multiple choice, I have options. Four of them in this case. What city is the capital of New Brunswick? Okay, so it's either Fredericton or St. John, I believe. I think it's Fredericton. What nice architecture. Wow, I have to probably go to that city someday. Maybe drive there. Okay, so Mugton, St. John's. Saint, what? There's two St. John's? What the hell is this? Okay, wait, hold on. I know the trick here. So people, if you don't know, St. John's with that apostrophe is... St. John of Newfoundland and Labrador. St. John is the one that's in New Brunswick. So if you see St. John and St. John's, just be aware of that. Now the answer to this is Fred Directing. If it's not, then I'm going to change my name to Fred, even though I hate it a lot.
Okay, good. It's Frederiksen. I mean, what else could it be? What did Canadian James Naismith... Oh my gosh. What did Canadian James Naismith invent in 1891? Okay, with a name like Naismith, I'm going to predict that he invented metal knives. Insulin, the zipper, basketball, lacrosse. Okay, look at this man. Um, judging from his face, he looks like somebody that makes zippers. Basketballs? He invented basketballs? I'm surprised it wasn't some tall African-American man. Wow, kidding. Please don't shoot me for saying that just because I made a stereotype about tall African-American men playing basketball. The truth is, all people play basketball. African men, white men, South Asian men, aka brown men, and yellow men, and biracial men. Everybody plays basketball. Even women play basketball. And you know what? Yes, even parrots play basketball. Don't believe me? Just type it into YouTube, parrot playing basketball, and you'll see that basketball is a sport who can bounce balls and run around and throw it in a hoop. Which Canadian invented the first cardiac, cardiac, cardiac pacemaker? Um, oh, oh, I'm not reading about these things not too long ago. It was Dr. Wilder Penfield, Dr. Amethyst Hopps, Frederick Banton. Actually, I think it was Frederick Banton. Yeah. Or was it Sir Sanford Fleming? Yeah, it was Dr. John Amethyst Hopps. Gosh, why didn't I pick that man? Okay, so for question 15 out of 19. In what two areas do the federal or provincial governments share jurisdiction? Is it civil rights and highways? Agriculture and immigration? Highways and criminal law? Criminal? Highways and criminal law? Or education and health? Um, okay, so provincial and federal, right? I'm going to assume it's um, education and health. Nope, it was agriculture and immigration. Wait, what? So provinces can control immigration? Huh, wow. Wow. That's interesting. Who is Canada's head of state? I think Haitian woman, I believe. Wait, no, what am I saying? Talking nonsense here, goodness gracious me. Um, it's the Queen, actually, yeah, it's the Queen. Um, the Prime Minister, the Governor General, Hedrichy Song, the Lieutenant Governor. Mm. It's the GMC Sierra. No, it's the Hereditary Sovereign. Who has the right to know how you voted in a federal election? Who has the right to know? Nobody, that's none of your darn business. Nobody has a right to know. Like, um, okay, I think I was about to click on nobody, but I guess I had my thumb sort of in between, so it accidentally hit your employer. But, um, yeah, because I thought much, because seriously, it ain't your business. Who cares if I vote in a federal election or not? Like, you don't need to know that. If I want to vote, I'll vote. If I don't want to vote, then I don't want to vote. But that's none of your business. And if you try to meddle in with my business, I'll slap you. Now, the police, especially the police. You know what they say about the police? Okay, um, next question. Who is Canada's largest trading partner? I'll tell you what that is. That is the United States of Grand America. That's who it is. And if they say it's somebody else, actually, hold on a second, never mind. It could possibly be China. No, it's the United States. I mean, because we share the same landmass, really. The truth is, the only thing that actually separates us is politics. That's it. But geographically speaking, you can walk from Canada to the States and vice versa if it weren't for laws. But because there are laws in place, obviously you can't do that. And I wouldn't recommend it unless you want to get into jail or get slapped or get shot or get mauled by a bear or a mountain lion or a cougar or whatever. So let's go with the United States. Good. That's the right answer. Could not be China, Japan, or India. Although we do trade with them, they are not our largest trading partners. July 1 was celebrated as Dominion Day from July 1, 1867, after the British North America Act was signed and the Dominion of Canada was born. And you know, in what year was the name officially changed to Canada Day? Um, 
1980. Gosh, it was 1982. Darn it! I'm afraid to rec receive my results because I often say that I'm a Canadian and I know this and I know that. So if I did poorly, they're going to kick me out of the country and I have to pick where I want. Actually, no, the problem is I won't get to pick! They'll pick for me! I'm going to be screwed! Please make it be a developed nation. Gosh, I scored 5 out of 19. Not bad, you got 26% correct. Oh shoot. Oh shoot! I really need to brush up on my knowledge. I did worse than the American. Actually, you know what? Let me tell you the truth about the American test. I actually took that test before, the first time I took it, when the stupid applications, it crashed again, so I had to do the test again. So that's why I honestly seemed like I did a little bit better on the American test, but the truth was, I got, I think, 5 out of 15, and in this one, I got 5 out of 19. So my score on the American test was actually originally 33%. Yes, I'm being honest and real here. I could have just lied and said, you know what? I didn't really get 73%, but I did not. So on both of these tests, I've done poorly. So you know what this means? I cannot live in Canada, nor can I live in America, because I have not proven my citizenship. They're going to throw me out. They're probably going to bring me back to Jamaica or something. Well, actually, no, I wasn't born in Jamaica, but you know what? They'll probably just throw me there anyway, because they'll be like, Oh, you have ancestry there? Okay, well, we'll kick you out and ship you on a boat or maybe on a rough, stinky plane with us of rats and cockroaches and bring you back to Jamaica and whip you and make you work under the sun and pick some banana. Come, Mr. Tellyman, let me do tell him in banana. Okay, I'm talking to Nazi. I think you're ready to shut up. Because if I don't shut up, I'm just going to keep talking about nonsense and that's going to tick people off because I have already said a bunch of things and just the way I'm talking is bound to tick you off. Like, I am so not funny. Why am I trying to be funny? Like, oh my goodness. Being funny is not what I do. I'm supposed to be outside filming whatever and playing games. Not taking quizzes and trying to be some big bad man. Actually, you know what? I am a big bad man. I'm so bad that I'm going to call it quits right now before the cops come to get me.